Coming up tonight in the Big Footy Podcast, we talk about the win over the Gold Coast, we talk about the upcoming game against Fremantle, and Doc joins us for the first time in several weeks. All this and more, coming right <laughs> Good evening and welcome to another episode of the Big Footy Blues Podcast. I am, of course, the Wookiee with me are my partners in crime. Happy dude. I'm shocked to be sitting here. Of course you are. Devoid of Caring is here with us for once. Goat cheese smells beautiful. <laughs> Just a battler is here with us. Well, maybe well, it's been maybe raptured not. or something. Jab, you there, mate? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Every time. And the old Dark Navies is here with us. I can't top that. Good evening, gentlemen. And uh, I've got a bone to pick with you, ODN, before we get started. Oh, I'll give you really. Yes, Captain Negativity on the Mainboard podcast last night. Only going to win one more game for the rest of the season, apparently. Oh, no, I didn't say that. Oh, no, no, I've no, listened no. to it several times today. So, I did repeat, not say- please, Wookie. I, I did not say we you will win did. one more game. No, you said I, I've got us winning one more game for the season. No, no, no. What I said is I worked out a ladder with us only working with winning one more game to show that we can still finish ninth because that's the two game break we have on the other teams and 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 then take Essendon spot in the finals. When we actually done the the tips, I had us. I think I tipped us winning three or four of the five. Fair enough. Yes. Real talk. So, Real talk. <laughs> just wanted. I wasn't going to you know, wasn't gonna do five or five. <laughs> just wanted to clear up a you know a minor misconception there, perhaps. Yeah. Guys, um, what were your <coughs> highlights from the weekend? Perhaps we'll start with uh, ODN and work our way across the group. Oh well, obviously you know winning a game. Uh, Any time we go up to Metricon, where we have a very poor record. Uh, and have a win is very good, especially since uh, Gold Coast beat Collingwood the week before. Uh, it's good to show that we can do better than Collingwood at all times. And uh, yeah, the standout for me was uh, was Edward Kerno, and uh, he did a great job. Yep, happy dude. What was your uh, highlight from the weekend? Oh, from the Carlton game, the I only really watched the highlights. Uh, Cruz's ruck work, Watson's goal, Charlie Dixon's beard, and I like seeing a Box Hill slash Hawthorne player get cleaned up on the weekend. <laughs> That's always good. Just to battle your highlight from the weekend, mate. Oh, the Cruz, the Cruz, the Cruz, the Cruz. And, you know, a win in Mitch Robinson's beautiful bump on Gary Ablett. Mm. Oh, that was, that was gold. That was nice. And all legal and above board, too. Mm. And, uh, Doc, what was your highlight from the weekend, Mark? Uh, I was just going to say Ed Kerner, actually, as well. I I was really impressed with Ed. Excellent. Just, yeah. No, no, it's all, all good yeah. stuff. Uh, my What's highlight from the weekend, uh, Lockie Henderson. I said this Damn on sure. the main board podcast last night. He uh, played, a very, uh, played another very good game for us. He's turning into something of a... An excellent forward for us, and uh, him kicking three or four goals a game at the moment is, uh, well, really good for us because it's what we've been lacking since Wait went went down, and uh, it makes Wait's position interesting when he returns. Well, yes, yes. Speaking of when he returns, there was talk you'd, you'd come back in this week and come back in defence, but once again, uh, Wait's a no show, and uh, gee, don't we do this dance every year? Yeah. We do indeed. All right, guys, we're going to. Uh, Go to a quick break and then come back and talk about the free, uh, sorry, the Gold Coast game. And there'll be some music here. Mm. Do, 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 do. I'll take recommendations if you've got them. Uh, I know. Was, no, was, uh, hey, happy no, dude. Was that, was that Box Hill bump the one where Clarkson went off? It is. It yeah. happens three metres in front of me on the fence. Oh, cool. Nice. And I, I gave the Box Hill players a mouthful when they were trying to stick up for their mate who was still on the ground. Fuck, fucking Box Hill. Yeah, it was. It wasn't that bad. It was. There was two players. He tried to shepherd one, and then the other one tried to move across, so he bumped him and sort of lifted his elbow a little and got him in 
the side of the head and the guy went down like a sack of shit. I need a song, something to do with the sun. Hmm. Walking so on the sunshine. Dugan, that was a bit unfortunate for Dugan, wasn't it? Because apparently he'd been playing better the last couple of weeks. Oh, in the Preston game, I didn't actually see Dugan's bump. I was at the Port Melbourne Box Hill game. Oh, yeah. The, the word when Clarkson went off at, at quarter time. Okay. I was inside getting the beer. Normally, I'm at the huddle too. I would have told him he was an angry little man. <laughs> All right, guys, we're, coming, we're going to come back from the break. So, just let's... I want to keep this moving if I can. Um, da -da 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 -da. All right. So, coming back from the break in three, two, and one. And uh, we're back and we're talking about the Carlton win over Free uh, sorry over Gold Coast on the weekend. Hopefully we'll have one over Freeman and we'll get to that later. But uh, Carlton on the weekend on Saturday in the afternoon there, on a very nice Saturday afternoon apparently up at Metricom, uh, defeated the Suns 16-24-120, defeated the Suns 11-11-77. And... Uh, it was a it was a relatively uh, scrappy match early. We were very inaccurate, kicking 16, 24, 24 behinds for us. So nothing mm -hmm. unusual for Carlton. The goal kickers: Henderson kicked four, Betts kicked three, Yaron two, Arnfield two, McLean two, Garlett, Watson and Judd one each. Uh, the best for Carlton: Cruiser, McLean, Judd, Robinson, Kerno, Henderson and Scotland. Uh, injury wise, Bootsma was replaced in the selected side by Jared Kashia or Kasia, or Kashir, or whatever you want to say. <laughs> That's for you, Aphrodite. You Cash pendant. money. And uh, Kane Lucas replaced, uh, uh, was replaced by Jared Kashir in the third quarter as a substitute. That information is uh, there on the AFL website. Guys, how did we see this game? And perhaps uh, we'll start with just a battler and work our way through the group. Well, it was a good win because um, it wasn't a foregone conclusion this time last week. Uh, so that makes it three in a row. And in that three, it's Saints, Norths and, and Gold Coast and Hoodoo's sort of knocked over, I suppose. Uh, Malthouse referred to referred to the Hoodoo thing, interestingly. Um, I, I thought Henderson was fantastic. Um, Cruiser was fantastic. Kerno continued his great form. Kasha, when he came on, continued his great form and um, you know, most guys did their job. Simpson's continuing great form from, you know, he's really um, doing well on that halfback flank, Posse. Um, there are a few notable ordinary performances, but, you know, good to get the third win. Yep. Cruz's got how many dream, I don't follow this dream point score game thing, but apparently 140 plus is a big effort and that's what he got. We well, got 16 uh, hitouts to advantage, which is one short of the record for a team, apparently. Mm. So, uh, not too bad, but given Nichols was off injured from, I think, the second quarter, uh, and they didn't really have a full time Ruckman playing for them, uh, it, it's. It, I mean, Cruiser still did bloody well, but, uh, yeah. He was up against Dixon for a lot of the match, and Dixon's not really a, a Ruckman per se. But, uh, so, uh, Doc, you watched the game? I did. I did. I'm colour me astonished. <laughs> mm. <laughs> How did you see the game, up? Oh, look, uh, it was good. We had the wins a win. Got the points on the board. That's, that's what we needed to do in the end, wasn't it? Um, goal kick, well, you, I, Jab, you've talked about this a lot, but the goal kicking was pretty ordinary yet again. <laughs> No swearing. To say the least. Some real talk there. Um, yeah, other than that, I can't think much else um, other than what Jab's already covered. Yep. Okay, and uh, uh, ODN, how did you see him up? Um, yeah, 65 um, inside 50s to 40 really told a bit of a story. Um and I just wanted to, I mean, I, I'd alluded to it in the previous week, um, that, that don't underestimate the importance of that 145 time slot um, and, and uh, not having to face the sun's under lights um, at Metricon. In that area, it does get very dewy 
um, you know, this sort of um, <coughs> it's right beside a um, uh, a river. And you you do get a bit of a creeping mist that comes up through there, and um, and we didn't handle it last year. So this year, in day and dry conditions, uh, we were able to show our skill, and um, and and th that was all important. Um, not having Rory Thompson there was a massive bonus to us. Um, yeah, uh, Henderson was able to do do as he liked, um, and um, yeah, I mean I I can't think of the. Gold Coast got close a few times, and uh, and um, we were able to kick away, and that's in no small part due to the Gold Coast uh, defence being so weakened. Um, look, you know, everyone's talked about Cruiser. He absolute, absolute full-on beast mode. Um, Kerno, uh, he kept Ablett down to what thirty plus disposals, but it, it yeah. wasn't just the thirty plus disposals. It was it was it, they they weren't. They weren't very telling disposals. He, he kept them really on his toes. He got 20-plus disposals himself, and he may be able to have to work defensively. Uh, and you don't, you know, we, we're starting to see this, a little bit of an attacking side of Kerno getting himself forward a little bit. Um, and he was clean and was, too. He was really clean oh, with his disposals. He was, he was clean. He, he was getting back. He was getting back and saving a few situations uh, as he did the previous week. So, um yeah, um, I, I can't speak highly enough. I'm, I'm not really usually a rap for run with players and negative players, and they don't usually bring about that enjoyment in a game. But we've got we've got a few of them. Um, but um, yeah, I couldn't go past I couldn't go past that. Uh, and you know, bit of bit of a shout out to uh, Scotland and Simpson who uh, provided plenty of run run and, and poise. Yeah, I reckon Kerno's actually developing into a bit more than just a run with player. Yeah, well, he's um he had a bit of a history of uh, did he would he win the VFL player one year or second in the in the VF in the, in the medal for the VFL one year? He was he was close. I think he came second he after came, after he broke a leg or something like that. Or he came, he came pretty pretty close. Yeah. He played for Box Hill, and, and he missed a lot of games, didn't he? And um, and he still came pretty close. Um, and and I, th I from memory, he was a bit of an, an accumulator there. Yeah. Um. So he just. You know whether it would be because he was his skills were down a bit, and so he became a run win, win yeah. player with us. Uh, now it seems like he's getting a bit of confidence. He's feeling like he's part of that twenty-two. He's yeah. not in and out every week. Uh, Malthouse has really put some faith into him. So even when he's looking to drop a negative, a negating player, it'll be it'll be Kashi or you know it won't be uh, it won't be Kerner. He's keeping him there, and he re and he really values him. I think he'll poll quite well. In our best and fairest this year, because um, that's the sort of player, uh, and the sort of efforts that you know we, we sort of judge these things a little bit differently to other clubs, and um, and uh, it's usually those hard, you know, consistent players that we, um, you know, we're looking to reward. So, I think you know, Kerno is playing uh, is is an offensive tagger rather than a defensive tagger. Um, he he just he do, he did the role so well. Um, hmm. I don't even think Albert got a goal, did he? Uh, did he? No, I, I don't think, think, think he got a goal, one. whereas he kicked two against the Pies. Um, so, I, I, he, I, I, he, I no, really no, he did get a goal. He got, he one, got goal. one goal. One goal, yeah. Which isn't too bad, uh, given Kerno is criminally underrated, I think, at times. But anyway, happy dude, how did you see the game up? Um, as mentioned before, with the scoring shots being inaccurate, um, it's obviously a problem. But winning by seven goals and kicking 24 points is a good sign for how the rest of the team works. Uh, we're not kicking for goal, so I thought that was a good thing to take away, considering Gold Coast aren't the easy beats that they used to be. They're slowly improving every week as it goes along. Um, I thought it was uh, the midfield. I, I, I honestly think that the game would have been a lot closer if Prestia, Swallow and uh, uh, Thompson had played. Mm. Um, Prestia is a class act and so is Swallow. And uh, so is Thompson. So um, I think we might have been in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, uh, yeah we given probably would have been we played. if they had a full, full um, strength midfield playing at their full capacity, but then we would have won by more of our midfielders playing at its full capacity, which it seems to have been down on lately. Yeah, but it's not just... It, those players weren't even at the game. They weren't even named in the side, whereas Carlton are pretty close... I mean, aside from Jared Waite, we're at full strength. 
There's, yeah. there's almost no one missing at the moment. Our injury list is almost negligible at the moment. So, yeah. uh, you know, aside from weight, who would walk oh. into the team if he was playing. And a third um, tall down defence. You know. Who we'll would just mm. keep waiting for that? But anyway. I'd probably probably need to make, gold. Yeah, pro- probably need to wait and make mention of the six goals between uh, uh, Betsy Aaron and, and Garlett. When they when they perform, we're invariably um, doing well and they've been, they've been collectively down, um, you know, a lot this year. Um, but, you know, six goals and... and Lifting the possession rates as well. I was, um, you know, uh, Eddie. Eddie was in the centre a fair bit, and um, um, yeah, it was. Um, Again, I just, I would like to point out Henderson had seven marks and four goals, um, which was pretty damn good effort. Well, Can't seem not to, to kick five, can he? Yeah, he no, will all, kick. every single every, every single one of those marks was uh, was inside the fo- the forward fifty. Yeah. So um, it's he, he didn't have to go searching for it. He was just happy to um, take on his opponent. So um, you know. Yeah. The stand, other thing. The other, stand and deliver. Sorry. Sorry. The other thing I wanted to bring up was uh, Charlie Dixon was playing his second game since round six apparently, mm. um, and uh, he he did. Uh, well, he kicked two goals in the first quarter, uh, four contested marks and ten hit-outs after Nichols was injured. So he did all right against Cruiser. Um, I still think we should have gone for him. We should have chased him last year. Oh, big oh, time. I... Dixon's going to be one of the premier big men in the comp, I reckon. Just and, so mobile. And and a Queenslander. And yeah. I like, we like that Queenslanders. Was, that was the other game changer too, wasn't it? Because it took a lot of pressure off Jam. Has to go into the into the right because he was uh, he was looking ominous early. Yeah. So we were lucky in that area, um, but it could have been a it. lot closer if uh, things had gone more the Suns way in at selection and uh, in injury. So, any other thoughts you guys had before we uh, move along? I think no. we covered everything. Well, <laughs> good. Just just the Dixon beard. Yeah, Dixon Beer is pretty damn good. That thing is it's a, it, it, almost it's alive. A, looks, looks like it was going to reach out and dad. just like grab Watson and suck him in. <laughs> well, like and and we should congratulate Watson for kicking his first goal too. That or, was, uh, or it also looked like yeah. when, when they were going out for the ruck that he like the beard would just t- attach onto Chris's jumper and pull him up even higher. But, <laughs> yeah, interesting. Uh, yes, we should congratulate Matthew Watson on his first goal. Yeah, um, it was, yeah, it was yeah. very well done. It was mm. uh, even even if seven missed it when they uh, called what a it a banger, but um, yeah, it was so that's uh, it. and it was also all oh. obviously pre-planned. Don't even get yeah, me started well, on that channel it's, seven it's, it's set play. Don't even get me started on that channel seven bloody replay <laughs> on that. That was ridiculous. You Those commentators, a bunch of muppets. Didn't we have the Z team, the Z team on uh, on Saturday? Oh, <laughs> pack of retards. The Saturday was, afternoon. It was a joke. Was add with this and add with that and fucking add with the other thing. Well, wasn't Oops. it Basil, Basil Vitamins and uh, who was the other one? It was a commentary time. All right, guys. Uh, we're going to uh, go to a quick break. We're going to come back and talk about the news uh, from Carlton this week. And then later on, we'll be discussing the Fremantle game on the weekend, which is a very big one for Carlton. And so we'll have a bit to talk about there. Can hardly wait. And then we shall go to a quick break. Music. Musical interludes take 45 seconds, no more. Oh, <laughs> this is seeming a bit professional compared to the last few weeks. Musical breaks and news and... Don't you worry, Martin. Everything I learned from the, big fo- uh, from the Mainboard podcast gets applied here. Ah, good work. Now, uh, you've got to try and... I've got to try and keep up with all this professionalism. Young and too tall, fucking right, you do. To go we just drink. Yeah, I'm drinking. I've got half this beer. I've got one more beer left. <laughs> After this case and that other case, there's only one case left. Do you guys listen to the uh, listen to the main board podcast no. last night and not today? Like no, I don't think I've ever listened to the main board podcast. Did you see well, what I'm I did on the drug to kill River Phoenix was one of the music. <laughs> oh, oh, really? I'm going to have to listen to it now. <laughs> I love. Rhythm. You see what I did to Messenger though? Yeah. 
<laughs> he must have been on. He must have been on drugs last night. I just oh, line, first of all his Lionel Richie impression, and then uh, <laughs> oh, but I, I was I was I was so happy when I got his Tism thing tied into but the he, Tism he song. He doesn't shut up though, does he? He just keeps on talking. That bloke. Ah, uh, message is good value, and he's, yeah, and, no, and he's, he's, a, he's a very good sport as well. All right, so we're coming back from the break to talk about the news in three and two, and we're back and we're talking about the news that's come out of Carlton this week, and uh, first of all, apparently uh, Bryce Gibbs in the news today saying that uh, talk he could switch sides is nothing more than media speculation. I, was un- I wasn't even aware that he was uh, planning on leaving. Any of you guys? I don't think he was. No, only those, only that speculation about a, about uh, trading for the number one draft pick. But that, uh, that wasn't that wasn't anything concrete. I'd heard speculation about him going back to Adelaide when he became a free agent, but that's all I thought it was was just some media yobbo flapping his gums. I, I think Mick, 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 sorry, Mick came out and supported both. Said Cruiser and Gibbs aren't going anywhere, and Gibbs during the week seemed very um, satisfied with the coach coming in. Well, I think he was on uh, he was on one of the shows last week saying the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, Nick Dygan will spend two weeks uh, suspended after uh, being reported for striking, so uh, his chances are getting less and less that he'll make it into the side by the end of the year. Hmm. He'll he's, uh, he, 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 he's done it a couple of times this year in the VFL, hasn't he? He seems, he seems to be a bit frustrated being maybe down at that level, I don't know. For a man who's got a psychology diploma, I think he has. He doesn't seem to control his anger very well. He's an angry man. Yes. <laughs> uh, speculation that Jared Waite could go back this week on the Carlton website as well. Um, I don't see it. I've always well, liked Jared Waite as a centre-half back, but I'm biased. I seem to he, always pick backmen to like. like. I preferred Henderson as a backman before he started kicking four goals a week. Yeah, Wait got um, he was he, he got to play in that representative match. Uh, also, I can't remember what it was Fed played in it as well, but it was a few years ago, one of the last representative matches, um, um, and Wait got selected because he playing at centre half back. He was in strong All Australian uh, form until he, he went down with this um, with a knee injury. Um, so you know, well, what, what do you play a year and a half back there? Uh, well, yeah, I'm pretty played, sure he did. I seem to remember uh, pl- playing Frio over there when we wore those yellow jumpers for um, yeah. cancer research or whatever it was. And he played at centre half back then. He was a really good rebounder and intercept mark and le- reading the. Well, he, ball. he he has the leap to come over the top and spoil, and he was the first to recover back there. So, but you know whether he can do that now, or the or the way that his body is, because it requires an awful lot of twisting and turning and and whatnot. So, I mean, weight at full. Full fitness is is fantastic at centre half back. Weight uh, at thirty years of age, um, breaking down every you know every month. Uh, I'm not so sure. I don't know if you guys watched uh, the clips I put up during the week, but uh, AFL Insider covered um, Carlton's Bio Motion Centre, apparently the largest one by volume in the world. Yeah. Um, and quite We're winning unique. something. Quite unique in Australia, apparently. But uh, they had a bit of Levi Casbold on there explaining how it helps injury uh, helps people recover from injuries and whatnot. So uh, hopefully Jared Waite gets back on the park even sooner as a result of the million-dollar technology. Well, it was bone bruising, you know? How many weeks has he been out now? Like yeah, bone, bone bruising. His bones must be bruised. Yeah, you couldn't mm. tell, but I was doing air quotes. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, it's, it's really it's fun. it's good that we can laugh about it. Bit, bit of an article on uh, I don't even know how to pronounce his name, Sauron Byrne, uh, an Irish guy who is currently over here. He he should be all right. I've seen a little bit about this guy. Now, if he can learn from Zach, if he can turn out anything like Zach, uh, we'll be on another win there. Yeah, the potential's oh, wow. there for him to. Fit that sort of mold. Has he got Zach. some size? Uh, he hasn't filled out properly oh, yet, well, but you could could no, bulk him no, up. No, he's no. got the frame there. He's oh, not okay. not small. He's not bootsman size, but he's got the frame there. He just needs a little bit 
you know, more. Zach always had the big quads, didn't he? He always looked yeah. like he was going to be a, be a bit of a beast. And God, God, I love Zach Tui. Uh, I love, love his attitude. He's got probably the best attitude in the side. Oh, absolutely. And, and, he, and he's got no rights to show the skill he shows and the poise he shows. I mean, I know he doesn't get a heap of the ball, but... God, he just turns up at you know really appropriate times, and uh, you know every time he's near the ball, I breathe a sigh of relief. Well, you gotta <laughs> love it when he sets sail from outside fifty, don't you? Like, oh, it's oh thing to magical. bowl, thing of beauty. Yeah, um, I've got a Irish her- Irish heritage as well, so he's just now. yeah doing it well. Is that where the, well, the top of the morning to you? Happy to making me proud. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and finally, Andrew Carazzo on uh, the AFL website today, uh, talking about the number of taggers Carlton have. Uh, Ed Kerno, uh, Jared Kashia, Dennis Armfield, Kate Simpson, Bryce Gibbs have all shown that they can do negating roles, and that makes him fairly confident that we can take it up to Frio. I don't quite get the logic, but yeah. So well, uh, Frio are a negative team. We're full of negative players. Yeah, this could be the by, first negative, by negative, you get a positive. So. This could be the first game in history that ends up with a negative score. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll draw. Anyway, I, I, guess we'll, I guess we'll talk about that in the Frio. We, we will be talking about that all yeah, shortly. Eddie, Eddie Betts. Ah, yes. Well done. Eddie Betts in the news as well for uh, putting his contract on hold. and uh, Well, not, not on hold. He's asking for 600 grand. Sure. Uh, uh, <laughs> Bye-bye, Eddie. Sure, surely he's taking the piss. Apparently love not. You, love you, Eddie. If you can get 600 grand, grand, grand mate, go and uh, look after your family, and uh, thanks for all you've done. Yeah, he's a, look, he's within his rights to ask, but I yeah. don't, he's not no going to get it. Hopefully from anybody. Not. From anybody. He won't get that from anybody. Not at his age, no. No. So, well, not, um, not for the role he plays. No, he, ha- he he hasn't developed the tank to stay in the midfield for any great length of time. Um, you know, he's a mercurial player, and he's a beautiful player to watch. But uh, um, you, you know, I don't know whether he blots his copybook if he if he goes chasing. Uh, I, I don't know. He goes chasing the money now because he's he's probably got a role around the club in years to come. Um, uh, you know, in some way because you know he's he's. Really part of the Carlton family, and you know, I don't know. I, I wish I, I wish him well if he can get that much, but he won't. So I hope he doesn't go for, you know, a piddling fifty thousand more or something like that. You know, yeah. St- stay at the stay at the Blues, Eddie. Don't 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 go somewhere where you're not appreciated, mate. All right, I'd lads. Line up against him. I would too. Yeah, <laughs> I would uh, too. There, but, there aren't a lot of teams that could actually use Eddie properly, like Adelaide would be one. Yeah, oh, I think there are a few teams that need a small forward. Yeah, but, Adelaide, uh, Adelaide, for sure. Um, I reckon he'd, he'd be welcoming any of the um, expansion teams up north. St Kilda but, might want him. Uh, well, especially with Saad. Apparently, well, that's, yeah, yeah with, with, with all rumours and news and scandals floating around, St Kilda might be in the market for him too. Yeah. All right, guys, well, that's been the, the news discussion for the week. And uh, we're going to take a very quick break and then come back and talk about the Frio game on the weekend. You got me picked that up from before. <laughs> I, was watching, I was watching the Blues Brothers the other power, night. Power of suggestion. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I actually do want music, select, uh, music suggestions if you've got them. Oh, well, what, we, we, what, what sort of theme are you looking at? Um, anything that fits in with what we're talking about. Oh, that cuts oh. me out then. Because otherwise... <laughs> like, nothing's free. Because or... otherwise, yeah, I'm going to pick a song from the 80s that closely fits what we're going to talk about. Yeah, no, the only thing I can think about Freo would be Nothing's Free by Alice Cooper. Uh. That's not really a good lead-in song. No. no song let's, a... let's face yeah. it, I'm going to... That, it, that involves free. So you need free something. Bird? You, you, no, I, 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 th- I think we need to look at something that's uh, something that that, that that reflects in in a, in a dour struggle, negativity kind of. 
not just Frio, you know, like um that that'd be uh, I'd walk a thousand whatever, you know, that song. I, I was gonna oh. do when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Yeah. Yeah. Go and get stuffed. <laughs> Go and get it. stuffed, Tom. Yeah, I used to say that. Um, yeah. That that uh, Alex the Seal. That's a good song. Too. Yeah, Alex yeah. the Seal. <laughs> Bad things by Wednesday Thirteen. That's a great song. <laughs> Man, Doc should pick the music. <laughs> oh, that song would be great. Except yes, we couldn't use it. Even the bit oh. when he like runs over the guy's head and puts yeah. him in the first. <laughs> yeah. I'm, exactly. I'm, just, I'm, I'm just going through my library to see if I get any ideas. All right. Well, uh, in the meantime, we're going to talk the Frio game. So that's, you come that's a back. good idea for a piece of software, isn't it? Type in a th- type in an idea and get a list of songs. Well, you can probably do that in Google. I think that's that's what they call that piece of software. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 well, that's our breakover anyway. <laughs> He's got to learn to ask Google the right questions. He's got to push the right buttons. Uh, I'm gonna sign up for Spotify. All right, we're coming back from the break in three and two and one, two, three, four. Um, where are we? Um, okay, and we're coming. And we that was bad. All right. And we're back from, uh, what am I doing that for? That's not how I do it. Okay, we're going to talk about the uh, game against Fremantle on the weekend uh, on Saturday night at 7.40pm if you're in Melbourne. Um, This game is live on Channel 7, which means you'll be inflicted with the Channel 7 Saturday team, um, which... If oh, I remember rightly, it's Brian Taylor and his buddies. So, Taylor, What's Richo, uh, and whatnot, if you're watching it on television. Luke Good luck uh, to you all. <laughs> I'll be there, so I don't have to listen to that crap. This, this game will be ninth versus 5th. Um, and possibly our grand final, if we lose this. Um... We are 9 wins versus 12. We are 8 losses versus 4. 113% versus 122%. Um, we have won our last 3. Fremantle have won 3 of their last 4. If we go to the stats, uh, Fremantle beat us in disposals. We beat them in clearances. We beat them in inside 50s. We beat them in contested possessions. They beat us in tackles. We beat them in hitouts, And they beat us in free kicks, as indeed every team does this season. Uh, the last five the times there, we... Folks. Last time we played them, we beat them in... Re- uh, we did beat them, actually. But it was a very low-scoring game. 10-5-65, defeated Fremantle 7-15-57 at Patterson Stadium in round five last year. It was ugly. And it was a very ugly game. In fact, our record against them in recent times isn't too bad. Uh, they haven't flogged us in any game. Uh, 2009, it was 15 points. 2010, it was nine points. 2000, the other game, 2010, was six points. And 2011, we beat them by 30 points. So, it's uh, two, three Fremantles way in the last uh, five games. Uh, last time we played, uh, Cade Simpson was our best ranked player with 35 possessions and 13 marks. And, uh, yeah. I reckon we got him. This will be at Etihad. Uh, Dockers have beaten us here. Uh, two to one. So, got him. Frio has won its past four games at Eddie Had. Carlton has won four of its past five, which is pretty good for us, given our record at Eddie Had in recent seasons. We got him. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'd so. like to take a moment to uh, welcome this kind change in optimism from uh, Jab. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's, it's unusual. Is this real talk, Jab? No, it's real talk. This this is a team we got. We got him. But Pav- Pavlich is out, so he can't rotate into the midfield. Um, Sandilands, if he does play, won't be 100%. McFarland's still out, right? Ballantyne oh. is named back in the side. Carlton yeah, have named an unchanged squad. Yeah, two will flatten him. 
Hopefully. We got we got where except um someone's got to do a job on Fife who I reckon's just an awesome player. And um, isn't he like three meters tall as well and weighs three hundred <laughs> kilos with some what? sort of all uh, five, gold you know, medalist athletic ability. He's a lot bigger than he was two years ago. Oh, he's still growing, man. Yeah. <laughs> but he's a good player, and so is... Um, who's that guy that runs off their halfback flank and creates a lot? Hill? Yeah, yep. Hill's good. Those two are their... Those two are their real danger men, I reckon. Yep. Freeman are one mm. of the... F- few teams as well that has a win loss record a superior win loss record over us 14 to 12 yeah we got to fix that yeah um, that's because they, they, they only came into existence in our dark days them and Port Adelaide <laughs> same story yeah so that's all Carlton have named an unchanged squad so the same guys will play and uh, Ray was lucky yeah, well, maybe. I think they just need to give him time to settle down. I don't think he can be dropping... Like, yeah, you can't ro- drop him after just one game, no, then you no, get no, rotating no, doors. I think he's lucky, that's all. I like him as a player. It's, yeah. it's, I mean, you can replace him with Casbolt, but you have the same problems. Casbolt can take a mark, and he takes a lot of them up the ground, Yeah. but um, he cannot kick for, to save himself. Yeah. Yeah. The last thing we need right now is revolving door policy on the forward line. Rose better with his hands as well. Down below. Oh, I find Rose positioning for a team orientated game is a little bit better, whereas Casbolt seems to isolate himself one on one in more of a selfish type scenario a little bit better. He wins the one on ones, but I find Rose can often do the team thing a little bit more. Mm-hmm. I think Ro I think that might all come under review if Wake can get back on the park, but until then yeah, I'm not even worrying about that, so and I'm not I even sure it will because we play Wait in the back line. I don't think we will. I I don't see Wait being played. I know Malthouse said we will, but as a substitute, I don't think I don't think Wait will play in defence. I think um, yeah, we need like. him. Or we could or we need another tall up forward. Um, we, we play we play very short, and Wait is a very very good forward. I think we would be if we can. We just need to leave Watson down there. With mm. Jamison, let those two develop, get to know each other. And, Jamo uh, seems like he's been under a lot more pressure since uh, Hendo went forward, though. He's not. Uh, he's there is he's that. nowhere near as sure. Yeah, big time. Mm. Yeah. Um, Kratzo and, and yourself uh, mentioned uh, the number of taggers we have, uh, run with players that we have in the side. So, does anybody see any significance in Aaron Joseph being named as an as an emergency? He won't play. He but won't but play. Why, is he, why, is he, why is he named as an emergency? They've I mean, named him as an emergency you, any number of times. Well, doesn't he just play really well in the seconds, but doesn't... Yeah, you know, we, we all know how he's in the first. I, I'm just concerned that, you know, with, with the likes of Ballantyne and Walters, uh, a lot of our... Most of our run with players can't play deep in defence. Uh, for some reason, we think that Joseph, Joseph still can, um, but um, that's probably uh, a thing of the past. But uh, yeah, you know, Tui possibly Walker possibly, uh, but I'm just I'm just worried about a late change whereby Joseph comes into play on Ballantyne. Uh, uh, I I just don't see the, the why the, the need for the selection uh, unless it was to reward VFL form. I don't know. Graham, just all I think it is. One. Sorry. If he brought Graham into uh, cover Ballantyne. Be an interesting selection decision. Is I think a, Graham's more of a midfielder, isn't he? Yeah, he's a he's a he's a pure midfielder. I don't. Is he? That would be that would that would hurt that that would that'd be a terrible first up assignment. I reckon for his first oh, game. Wouldn't do well for his confidence. I don't think. No, no. Um, look, I, I, oh god, I play I play uh, Gibbs and Fife head to head. I reckon both good in the air. Yeah. Um, um, so I wouldn't. I don't want Gibbs tagging Fife, although Fife did what you know did get 29 possessions last week. Um, but you know, and I don't like the idea of Gibbs being our cream and having to tag other guys. He's he's as good as Fife, no problem, no risk. Um, play him head to head and let them worry about each other. Um, and uh, you know, um, you know let the Crowley chips go to? Sorry, Carrot. Who do you reckon? Who do you reckon Crowley goes to? 
Oh, cra- oh, he, he, oh I think he'll go to Judd because he likes niggling Judd, but it, Judd or Murphy, obviously. But it, it, it'll probably be just be whoever's doing well. I think Murphy's been he's, he's been doing okay, but he hasn't been dominating, has he? So uh, I think there's a bit of a school of thought that if you if you if you hold Judd, we we really struggle to get that player that will grind out and lead us by example. Um, and I just think uh, I think he'll probably go to. Um, yeah, he'll go, he'll go to Judd, but I don't know who all out. I don't know Keisha, Armfield, Carrazzo, Kerno are going to because Frio don't have that type of midfield. And, you know, yeah. they, they're, they're not they're, they're not going to be as as alluded to before. They'll they're not really packing heat. Yeah, they'll they'll still, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean <laughs> Barlow and but you can you can throw McLean on Barlow and we can we can sit and watch them run from one end of the ground in, in, in a half a footy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They structure um, up really well Fremantle around the around the contests. They're one of the yeah, best teams at doing that. They they are. Um a couple of stats that I found, uh Wookie always tends to steal some of my stats that I look up before the podcast, but uh He's today I found him. yeah, that we um we're ranked fifth in the league for uh clearances per game, fifth in the league for marks inside fifty per game, and first in the league for contested marks per game. Second in the league for contested possessions per, um, per game, which I think will help us, will bode us well during this uh, contest against Freo when they try and clog us up a bit. Freo yeah. are ranked second in the league for kicks and marks and third for tackles. Just remember White and Casbold are our leading two contested mark players. So Yeah, Henderson would be right up there too, wouldn't he? Henderson and Jamison do okay. I, I think yeah. our style of play is... Uh, is pretty well suited for what Freo are going to try and do. Yeah, that's how I feel too, because Freo are also ranked 12th in the league um, for hitouts per game, and with our uh, hitouts being much higher than theirs and our clearances actually being all right this year, which I well, felt mind was you, that, that... last year, I reckon that we'll get them around the centre stoppage as well. They haven't Rodolph, really had saying? their main ruckman, though. They've had... Sandlands has been out for a long time, so... Yeah, even and then he's back. a bit touch and go, so I don't yeah, think yeah. too much well, of a yeah, worry. I still, I still, I still reckon Cruz is going to be all over him. Like, oh, Cruz is in Cruz will beast dump all over him. Yeah. Wouldn't you love to see Cruz and just smash Sandlands out of the game like if you did a jolly? No, oh, Cruz is <laughs> going to grab Sandlands and wipe his well, bum with him. If he if he does that, it it it, it saves us another problem because I'm concerned about uh, Sandilands going forward, Clark into the ruck, ruck and Sandilands going forward because yeah. we don't have anybody that can hold Sandilands if he goes forward. Um, Henderson um, possibly, but I, I I fear that Watson might end up on him, and um, you know he's going to require a great deal of help because uh, he's hard to, he's hard to shift. Um, just uh, the way where I reckon we might we might be able to win this. I, I feel that because Frio is such a uh, they like to cause a lot of contests, and we're we're better at we're better at contests this year than we've ever been. But um, Frio will try to will keep play a man behind the ball because they'll try to be getting us to bomb it. We, we, we're known for bombing yeah. bombing inside fifty. Frio and most teams, but Frio will do definitely do this. They'll 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 have a spare man in defence um, to take those rush kicks into into forward fifty all day long. So what we need to do is this is this is where. Uh, Armfield, Betts, Garlett, Yaron need to break lines and get through their zones. Um, and you know we need to. It, it's quick. It's quick ball movement, um, but not not straight down the middle. Like we don't. We certainly don't want Robinson in the, in the in the clearances bombing it inside fifty all day long. We need to have a better plan than that. And I think uh, I think. Getting it out quickly, the likes of McLean Judd getting it out quickly to those outriders, um, so that they can they they can run it through and and and, and beat the man and beat tackles. Okay, and that's yeah. it. Um, yeah. So a tip for the weekend, guys. Uh, well, we got Wookie, it. Sorry, it, it, Wookie took me to task for um for suggesting that Frio. Uh, well, putting this down as a Frio win on the main board, but I was being conservative just to, uh, uh, you know, uh, but I honestly believe that we can win this game. Um, so this is I'm our expe- one for the season? I'm, no, this is a new year. <laughs> I didn't say one for the season. You no, said one for the rest of the year. 
No, what I mean, I'll, 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 the mod doesn't believe in us. No, no. Look, I'll, if I look at all five games, I'm, I'm not going to say, <laughs> "Can't we going to win five from five? That will make us eight in a row. And when will we? When did we do that last? Nineteen ninety-five. You know, that, you know what, 2000, <laughs> 2000, 2000, I think we won about. We won. The only danger about, game we've got is the Bulldogs. Really, Essendon, yeah. Richmond. No, yeah. and Pansom. Yeah, well, I mean, but we'll take. I'll, I'll take. The, if I look at it five in a row, I go, Port. yeah, we're probably going to drop games in there. Okay, one or two games we'll probably drop. But if I take it game by game, I'm really confident about this one. And if we win this one, then I'm going to be confident about the next one. So, um, you know, well, we, we we learn not to get too far ahead of ourselves when we support this team of late. I'm um, pretty sure uh, Jab believes we're going to win this. What about you, uh, Doc? <laughs> yeah. So we're all going for wins on this. <laughs> How much, yeah. Doc? Ten goals. Two hundred. Ten goals. Two hundred. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Doc says go <laughs> by ten goals. Yeah, I think it's going to be close, but I think we've got this one in the bag. I it think, might go to a penalty shootout. I all think right. if we play the same sort of game we played against North Melbourne with long kicking and running with less overuse of the ball around the contest, we'll beat them. I reckon Carlton by 25. And we're also ranked 15 in the league for clangers per game. Tell you what, you know, if we beat Fremantle, uh, a few of these journalists are going to have to um, start thinking about Carlton. Oh, who cares about well, those journalists? If we, if we beat Fremantle and Port lose to Geelong this weekend, uh, we're in the yeah. eight. Yeah. Yep. Well, look, guys, Richmond beat Fremantle, and Richmond aren't that much better than us. They're not better than us. No, no, but I'm, 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 I'm even talking from an objective point of view because most people will agree with us and say we're biased, or disagree and say we're biased. But if if Richmond are doing better than us, it's not. It, we're only talking degrees here. We're not talking. We're not talking. You know, daylight. Um, and, and Richmond beat Fremantle fairly well, uh, and I don't see why we can't do the same. Okay, we're going to move on very quickly and talk about uh, the seconds. Uh, who had a very good win against uh, Coburg, 58 points at Preston City Oval on Sunday afternoon. Um, Carlton led all day, um, apart from five minutes early in the first. Um, And so it's our second win on the row. And, uh, yeah, so so according to the reports I'm looking at, we, uh, we played pretty well in perhaps more friendly conditions than we played in the week before. Who are the standouts? Sorry? Who are the standouts? Uh, Let me see, where am I? I'd say Graham did well. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Graham and Lambert did well. Graham Graham has got a few mentions here. Uh, In the best, Lambert, Graham, Digan, Bell, Bransgrove, Warnock, Davies and Joseph. Which uh, is logical given that Joseph was named in the... uh, Joseph and Graham. Well, are Joseph is a superstar VFL player. Oh, he is, like, isn't he? Uh, Adam Bentick that we had actually ended up being um, on the port list for that undefeated year that they yeah. went through. I used and to say was, this about... Um, good. I used to say this about Brett Thornton, but they would have made ideal captains for the reserve side if we still had one. Yeah. Like, like yeah, uh, Glasgow did when he retired from the senior side. Yeah. Co- Coburg aren't bad side um so it's actually quite a good win from um our boys in the seconds there um for those that don't know coburg is richmond's seconds for this year uh, next year they go yeah. their separate yeah, ways next, next year they're going standalone but over the past few years they've been richmond's seconds next year they go standalone the year after they probably won't exist but um yeah so lambert apparently had a very good afternoon he was uh the recipient of the bell street award with 32 possessions six tackles six goons and five inside 50s i'm a huge fan of lambert by the way let's get him i think uh i think carlton should uh should take a really good look at him before someone else picks him up if carlton don't pick him up i think someone else will for sure yeah there's a couple uh, of vfl players that are coming up that i reckon carlton should look at uh, the report describes uh, Gene Fania, Joseph and Davies as being very good in defence. So, Gene Fania, that? another one I think hard done by. He's played very well for us over the years. Who is that? Gene Fania. He's got one of the best names in football. Pretty good name. It's <laughs> almost as good as Jack Frost. It's a good Irish that? name. Robbie Warnock had 45 hit-outs. 
Yeah. Um, but only 12 possessions for the game. Um, and kicked a goal. So, so where's he oh. going next year? Oh. GWS. There's all, the, look, the problem is we've got two Ruckman in in our reserve. Well, one injured and one playing reserves. And either mm-hmm. one of them or both of them could be traded. Yep. GWS are the, the obvious target. Um, but well, I'm don't, sure... Don't Adelaide want a replacement for Jacobs now? Sweet irony, isn't it? You should have seen him, Doc, on their board, whinging about Jacobs. Gold Coast might be looking for an experienced Ruckman as well. No one likes a ringer. And uh, <laughs> oh, racist. Gold Coast might like a Ruckman. <laughs> and I Hanson's apologize to any listeners so. who may or may not be rangers. I don't. Real talk. Uh, the other one uh, is, um, we forgot to say in the news, was, you know, the persistent rumours that... Uh, Yaron doesn't get on particularly well with Mordaus. Well, I don't know whether that ties into uh, into the Eddie Betts rumours because I mean I just can't I couldn't imagine uh, that trio splitting up. They get along so well, and you know it's, it's just a posse they got they got going. And you know if Betts is potentially looking to uh, looking elsewhere, and Yaron doesn't get along with Malthouse, so. Um, um, yeah, it's uh, we can go from having uh, too much choice in that position to uh, you know not enough at all. Yeah. So, and I, I, I've had a visit from Numbers tonight. Um, oh, just, so just actually scrambled. just before you guys came on, he uh, showed his face this week. <laughs> he did. It was too wet for him last week, but uh, he was out tonight just uh, saying good day and um, plotting for the uh, Port Adelaide game in Adelaide. Mm. Um, so if, you, if you're coming to Adelaide for the game, uh, feel free to meet up with us. We'll be having a beer and whatnot before the game, and then heading out to the game, uh, heading out to uh, Amy Stadium. Okay. Dive only. Well, you know, I'll put you up yeah. for cheap accommodation if you want it. No, I gotta work. <laughs> cheap and cheap. <laughs> the, and them jobs paying for housing and living in Carlton memberships. I'm just saying. Mm. The options are there. All right, guys. We're going to wrap this up. Thank you very much for coming on. Thank you very much to our faithful listeners. Um, This is... uh, I'm not entirely sure how our download rankings are here, but uh, I know the main broadcast is doing pretty well. But um, thanks, guys, for coming on. Uh, ODN, good night to you. Good night, everybody. Happy dude, good night to you. I've still got half a beer left. Jab, good night to you. Good night, Wookie. And, uh, Doc, I am still astonished that you're actually here. I thought you might have been dead. I'm still astonished that... Yeah, you know, you're right. Good point. <laughs> he's like, still, I was going to put out a warrant for you this week. like search parties he, and all points bulletins and stuff. It was... It, he's still I'm astonished still, that Happy Dude's got half a beer left. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. I was going to say... Yeah, you were right on there. See? You see, you take my line before me even saying it. Uh, all over I've, this. They're all I've had today, so... Well done. Oh, get some real talk, and you know, just drink it. The I got to work in the morning. That's the Big Footy Podcast would like to encourage you to drink responsibly <laughs> <laughs> on a weekday, uh, weekend, yeah, free game on, on any what day, but especially it? on a fucking Thursday. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and with that, no, uh, yeah, have a good weekend, guys. May the best Carlton team win, and we'll see you all on the forums.